Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers, uh, today's a holiday and uh, the masjid is already starting to fill up. So it's going to get full quickly. Um, we just ask that everybody please move forward. Fill in the first rows first, inshallah. So brothers that are kind of scattered in the back, if you could please move up and move forward. Fill all the spaces that are ahead of you. It's not appropriate for brothers who come after you to step over your knees during the khutbah. Make room if sahih sahih and Make space so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make space for us in Shalom Even if it's a little bit of space. So brothers that are in the back there, please. And we're going to ask again repeatedly. So if you can just move forward, fill the first rows, and then we'll ask the brothers who come after you, inshallah, to uh, fill those uh, spaces, inshallah.
sorry to bother you, brothers. Uh, some of the, uh, the back is starting to get full. And it's going to get full quite quickly. So at this time, you shall know and request that whoever can stand to uh, fill the first rows first, please stand. Brothers, please stand and then step forward and complete the first rows, and shall well, Brothers that are in the back, please move ahead. Make, uh, make space for your brothers who are coming, inshallah. So just step forward. There's still some gaps up in some of the front rows. Just ensure that the rows are full. If you see that there's a space next to you, invite somebody from the row behind you to step forward. And once your row is complete, please uh, be seated just up below. Hey, the brothers in the back, there's some of you still seated. Please uh, fill, uh, fill the first rows first. Sorry to bother you, brothers, but uh, we're starting to get congested in the back. 
So if the brothers who are basically from the, the two pillars in the back and, uh, and back from there, if you brothers can please stand and complete those rows, fill any of the gaps that are ahead of you. I still see the odd gap here. There's the odd gap there. We need to ensure that we connect and fill the rows with our elders who are on the chairs on the side. We have to make sure that we connect and fulfill that obligation, inshallah. So again, brothers that are in the back, from the two pillars back, please stand. Please stand, brothers. You have brothers that are at the back, they're trying to find spaces. So anybody that's from those two pillars and back, please stand up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for making room for your brothers who are coming in. That the entryway is getting quite congested. So please, brothers in the back, from those two pillars back there, if somebody can just help me, any brothers from back there can help me to just turn around and tell the brothers to stand up. If When you're asked to make room and to make space for your brothers, Make space, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend and make space. Descend His mercy, inshallah. We ask that He descends His mercy and the acceptance. So brothers, please, that are back there, just stand. Please. Please stand up, brothers. I'm going to ask you again, inshallah. Please, brothers. The brothers that are in the back, from those two pillars backwards, the brothers that are ahead of you have already stood in order to make space for you. So now we need you to make space for the brothers who are coming. Just take a look at the entry. The message is getting full. We need to make sure that we fill it up before we start sending any other brothers downstairs. Please brothers, again, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, to have mercy upon you, to make space for you, inshallah. So please, brothers, any volunteers in the back that can help me by standing the brothers up. Brothers in the back, please stand up. Please. Brother Sam, can you help me? Can you get the brothers to stand up, please? Can you ask them to please stand there, brothers in the back row? Jazakallah khair. Thank you, brothers. Please just connect the rows from the chairs to the chairs, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Hi, 
دخل أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما وقال يا رسول الله أو تشفع لي يوم القيامة أنس بن مالك one incident he comes to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم while he finds him alone and he is ready to give quite decent answer he picks the right time when he comes to him and says Ya Rasulallah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Would you give me intercession in the day of judgment? Would you give me shafa'ah? Anas ibn Malik probably had a full understanding of the last khutbah that we shared two Fridays ago about the standings of each human being in front of Allah in the day of judgment Some people will be judged accurately Some people will be exposed, some people will be shot and the limbs will start speaking. Some people will be worth not even the wing of a fly in front of Allah. Some people will come like crazy. People will be in different kinds of types. 
And Anas ibn Malik doesn't want to go through that. He wants to have the VIP access to Jannah. Goes immediately. That judgment is so hard and tough and long day. And believers know that before the disbelievers, as they said in Surah Al-Insan, Inna nakhafu min Rabbina yawman abusan qamtarira. Abus, an ugly day. You don't want to go through it. So Anas is asking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu if he can give him that VIP access. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has many shafa'ahs in the last day of judgment. Has a shafa'ah for the judgment to start. Has a shafa'ah to admit people to Jannah. Has a shafa'ah to get people out of hellfire. Has a specific shafa'ah to specific people. So Anas want to find his name on the list at any how and any time. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives him the answer that comforts him. And he tells him, Ana fa'ilun inshallah. He doesn't say, I will do it. He says, I am doing it, insha'Allah. And that stressing and giving a stronger statement than I will do it. Because I will do it. This is something in the future. We will speak about it in the Day of Judgment. But I am doing it. I am planning and preparing my intention from now. Which comforts Anas ibn Malik. An answer that probably if you and I took it, we will just take it and run away. But not Anas ibn Malik. Not someone who's eager. He wants to have the written confirmation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to have a So he continues and he asks him, Aina ajduka ya Rasulullah. Now I know that you will give me shafa'ah. But on the day of judgment, there will be billions of human beings looking for you. Where shall I find you in the day of judgment? While everyone is standing and looking for himself, I want to spend my whole time looking for you. Where do I find you? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, أول ما تجدني يا أنس تجدني عند الصراط. The first place you can look for me at the beginning of the sirat, the beginning of the straight path where I will be standing there and waiting for believers to come to me and I'll ask for the shifa. Good answer. You can take it and go with it. That's a good. That's a that's a sufficient answer. You know now what Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه says. But Anas ibn Malik had different scenarios in his mind. This is probably the most stressful matter in his head. He says, فَإِن لَمْ أَجِدْكَ عِنْدَ الصِّرَاطِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Things will happen and I might not be able to find you on the sirat. Where do I find you? Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم tells him, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْنِ عِنْدَ الصِّرَاطِ تَجِدُنِ عِنْدَ الْمِزَانِ If you don't find me on the sirat, you will find me right where the scales are put. And the mizan is a real mizan, a real scale that you can think of it. له لسان وكفتان. It's a scale that has two hands and it has a tongue, and every single human being will pass through that mizan, and his deeds will be put right there, the goods and the bad. And Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه will be standing also there. And Anas ibn Malik is not sufficient yet with that. And he says, Ya Rasul Allah, فَإِن لَمْ أَجِدْكَ عِنْدَ الْمِزَانِ If I didn't find you there with the mizan, he said, تَجِدُنِي عِنْدَ الْحَوْضِ You will find me right on al-hawd, the basin. Hawd will come from. And this is at the end of al-sirat. This is before entering al-jannah. And this is why we make the dua always Allahumma inna nas'aluka sharbatan min hawdi nabiyyika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la nazma'u ba'daha abada If you manage to find Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that spot and save yourself from a sirat you will be admitted right to Jannah End of the hadith The mentality here of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu has to be studied has to be sure with, with a specific course by itself. This man that spent his life serving Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not feeling safe. And his main and only concern is how do I save myself? He knew that this life is nothing but an illusion. It's a delusion in life. It's a fake life. It's zukhruf. Zukhruf. That's how Allah describes it. And he knew that the ultimate and the real life is in Jannah, is in the hereafter. And this is where I need to save myself. One of the the, the lovely things about his end of time when, when Abdullah ibn, ibn Mus'ad entered to him and he was on the death of bed, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, and he had one hair of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Abdullah, Ida ana mit fada'ha tahta If I died, 
Put this heart under my tongue. So when I'm resurrected, I'm resurrected with it in my mouth. That reminds me nothing except of Abdullah ibn Uwais who held the cane of Prophet Muhammad and said, Da'uha fi qabri idha meet. Put it in my grave when I die, so I'm resurrected with it. Those people are treating with the day, treating the day of judgment as if it's happening tomorrow. As if it's just around the corner. It's not 10 or 20 or 30 years as we think of it. It's tomorrow. Aina ajiduka ya Rasulullah, where do I find you? And this is the situation of everyone that graduates from the school of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you find them always, when he passes, he mentions the previous khutba, how he teaches them that lesson always, a day after day. When he passes by Bayla ibn Rabah and he finds him holding a date, a bag of dates. Bayla ibn Rabah is a poor guy. Like the last one that you tell him about Spain, the last one you would look at him when you're doing a fundraise, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells him, what is that in your hand? He says, surratum min tamrin ya Rasulullah. It dakhat to halikat. It's just a bag of dates. I'm saving it for tomorrow. He said, Anfiq Bilal, spend it. Wala taqsha min til arshi aqlala. What guarantees to you that you will sleep for tomorrow? Why would you save it for tomorrow? Leave the risk of tomorrow for the day of tomorrow. For the God of tomorrow, Ibn Adam. Lam atlub min ka amala ghat fala tasalni an miskirat. When he passes by Abdullah ibn Amr and he finds him renovating a wall and he says, Ma hadha ya Abdullah. He says, Ya Rasulullah. I'm just renovating the wall. He said, Al-Amru Asra'a min thalik. Al-Amru Asra'a min thalik. Day of judgment is faster than what you're doing. Why are you planning to live years on that? Al-Amru Asra'a min thalik. This is how you find Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preparing them for that. This is why each and every one treats the day of judgment as it is tomorrow. And I need to save myself. Just like each and one of us would fight would run after dunya to make each and every penny. And you're ready to fight for it. They're ready to fight for the Day of Judgment. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi was speaking about the doors of heaven, and he's picturing for them, and he says, the door of jihad will call the people of jihad, the door of salah will call the people of salah, the door of siyam will call the people of siyam. Look at the mentality of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Rasulullah, awa yud'a ahadun min abwabil jinnati. I know that everyone will be admitted, but what about the eight doors? Would I be called to all the doors together? And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, yes. And you would probably be one of them. Look how they think. They think big. Those are businessmen. But businessmen with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The, invest, the investment they have is with the greatest and the one and only. When, when, when Ukash ibn Muhsin hears, just listens a statement that there's 70,000 people getting into Jannah with no punishment and no judgment. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Ud'u Mahari and Ya'amna Minhum. He says, Enter the door. Because you are one of them. You are one of them. When Rabi' al Aslami is asked a question by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's any shayla. Just ask me anything. And his one concern, one goal, one ambitious is to end up with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, this is a very important and core understanding of our faith. As many of us are delusioned by the life, and that reminder never gets old. That always life builds veils in front of your eyes that you don't see what's ahead of you. And this is why you're consumed, you're milked by the act of dunya. And even the act of akhirah is done for the sake of dunya. And now here, I'm not speaking about our sins as we're sinful people. I'm speaking about our good deeds that we do it. And ultimately, if we dig deep down into it, we will find that nothing except the work of dunya. A light example to that, a painful example to that, what happened in Calgary here. An example that I had a view on it, and I would like to share that view with you as we have to revisit our intentions, re-evaluate our path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last Saturday, we had one of the greatest speakers coming to Calgary, a speaker who is idol and role model for many of us, especially for the North American people and the world in general, Sheikh Yasser al-Qabi. 
and was hosted by great organizations doing the good, and they worked for the good sake, Islamic relief, and they did such a profound event on that last Saturday, fund and raising the funds for Syria. May Allah bless them and, and, and reward them with the good for what they did. The Shaykh and the organization is not this group of the talk, put them aside. We are the Zoom and this group of the talk. As I was a presenting Shaykh to the, to the presentation that he was, he was giving on that day, and I can see all the attendees, I can see all the people in that hall, it's packed up to the last chair in the hall. I asked one of the organization, one of the organizers, how much is the capacity of this hall? He said, six to seven hundred people. I would go with the minimum six hundred people. Six hundred people, Muslims, dedicated to be active on that event. They paid money for it. They came in a freezing night and cold. If you remember that last Saturday, it was minus 25 at least. They come to that event where roads were nasty, full of snow, it's dangerous to drive. Yet they make it on time, on the dot. They sit there for the last minute. They attend the dinner, the fundraise, the speech. They're full of energy, full of iman and full of faith. And they did such generous fundraising there. May Allah reward them and save our brothers in Syria. And that's the bright side of the event. Now the dark side of it. When it came the second morning to the Fajr prayer, which was six hours right before that event, and barely 15 people were on the first line. By the end of the prayer, you're talking about mostly with the best numbers and statistics, two lines, not even. And the only question I had to myself to ask where are the 600 passionate people that I just saw yesterday? Where are they? They were full of iman that they did all the, they make all the drive to there, attended the event, the call of the fundraise, but then no one is here showing up to the fajr. They came to the event that is calling for Allah, but they were absent to the call of Allah Himself. What are we doing? What's going on there? Who's your God? It's very easy to say Allah today. But it will be the toughest and the hardest answer when you are in the grave and an ugly looking angel, this angel is asking you, Man Rabbuk, at that stage you will be exposed. And all the events and public speaking events and the money that you spent, that it was faked for the sake of Allah. Today you can't lie. You can't fake nothing. Because the reality has just come out of it. This, this is why Al-Bara' ibn Azab radiallahu anhu says, رأيت رسول الله واقفا على صلى الله عليه وسلم واقفا على قبر. I've seen Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم standing on the edge of empty grave. And he's crying out that the soil was wet. And he looked at us. And he said, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَعْمَلُوا For this you shall work. This is where the reality will be exposed. مَا بَالُوا أَقْوَامُ يَعْبُدُونَ اللَّهَ عَلَى هَوَاهُمْ فَإِنْ رَضُوا أَرْضَ رَبَّهُمْ وَإِنْ سَخِطُوا أَسْخَطُوا رَبَّهُمْ What's wrong with people worshipping Allah according to their own desires? I love this public speaker. I want to attend him. Fajr prayer is not my thing. Isha prayer is too late. He forms his ibadah according to his moods. Those who spend only when there is a specific fundraiser is raising the funds. They would come to the masjid only when there's a public speaker is coming to the masjid. They would pray at the masjid only when the specific imam is coming. Who is your God? It's an invitation to revisit your God. Before a day comes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, why did you pray? And why did you spend? And why did you worship? And you would think, it's an easy answer to say Allah, and you would smash it in your face, Kadabit, you liar. Fa'alt, you qala fa'alt. Hafilt, you qala hafilt. Sallayt, you qala sallayt. If there is a one and only reminder, I would leave you so and myself to glaze. Worship the one and only. There's many things that are happening today in our life 
that take you away from the path of Allah without you even knowing it. And the only way to fix your drive is to come to the house of Allah and worship Allah by Himself with no any other motivation and external motivations out there. This is how to find Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the day of Jalil. Those people who attend many events out there and worship Allah according to their own moods, they won't be able to find Him. They will get lost in the day of judgment. Whereas Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, the one who knew exactly his God and who is worshipping as Allah, who knew his prophet and knew his deen, will surely, certainly, manage to find his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. أَقْبُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ خَطَعِكَ فَإِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ صَلَابِكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ Yet, he tells him that partnership with Allah can sneak easily to your heart just like an ant sneaks into the door. If a whole army of ants now come to the masjid, no one will feel it. And this is how shirk and partnership sneaks into your heart without you feeling it, without you knowing it. And you think for all that time that you've been worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, when things are exposed on the table, you've been worshipping this imam, you've been worshipping this sheikh, you've been worshipping this organization, you've been worshipping your tribe, you've been worshipping yourself, and Allah was not there on the list. An invitation and a reminder for everyone to look for his God. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, generally, to all the believers, وَقَالَ اللَّهِ لَا تَتَّخِذُوا إِلَهِي إنما هو إله واحد فإياه فقرون ثم بعد هذا اعلموا أن الله أمركم بأمره بدأ في نفسه فقال عز من طائل الحكيمة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى زوجاته المطهار وأصحابه الأخيار وعنا معهم بعفوك وكرمك وجودك يا أكبر الكريم اللهم لا تجعل لنا في مقامنا هذا لما إذا رفعته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا كرب إلا نفسه ولا دين إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلى إلا عطيته برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أغلنا أنفسنا ظلما كثيرا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكن من الخاسرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يحسبون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى وجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليد الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله